Gordon Ryan has single-handedly transformed the sport with an unmatched submission rate and the title of who's number one heavyweight champion. Gordon Ryan has earned his nickname, The King. Felipe Pena isn't afraid of anyone, especially not a competitor he's already defeated twice. A multiple time world champion in Jiu Jitsu, Pena is on his way to becoming one of the greatest champions Brazil has ever produced. If Gordon has a kryptonite, it might be Felipe Pena. Two fierce adversaries will take to the mat, destined to cross paths once more. One is eager to avenge his past mistakes. The other relishes the opportunity to silence the biggest trash talker in the sport. When the dust settles, one will walk away with victory. The other will suffer a devastating loss. One way or another, someone will tap out. This is the road to who's number one. Gordon Ryan versus Felipe Pena. Four. The truth is, any time you go into a no time of a match, you're going into the unknown. It has this purity to it. There's no appealing to, you know, the referee did this or the referee did that. It's just like two guys on a mat and they go into a one quits. There's no more unambiguous result than that. We know there's going to be a result. The only question is how long is it going to take? Oh man, we got a shootout here. We got a real shootout. The leg entanglement as well, such a factor. The trap, if we see the other angle, take a look at the other side of this. Oh, we missed the leg entanglement because Penner used that. Wow. Man, that was what saved him against the top pressure of Gordon Wright. Gordon Wright wanted to go chest to chest because his legs were tied up in such a way that Felipe Penner was safe. And now they're back up again. Very uncertain scenes there for a moment. I couldn't understand what Felipe Pena was trying to communicate to me. I asked him if he was done. He didn't respond. The fatigue will make somebody get sloppy. That's when the mistakes happen. That's when the attacks come. That's when the openings are there. And Gordon Ryan uses a foot sweep to send Felipe Pena to the mat once again. He's maintaining an even pace where you can see the Felipe Pena is, is basically dropping back. And I got I feel that the momentum has shifted drastically in this match now. Yeah, you could say it was pretty even, but after Buffy Bay. That's it. Our referee Gabriel Martinez has called an end to this contest of 44 minutes and 41 seconds. It looks like Felipe Penner has decided enough is enough. Everyone is clapping hand for this guy, but he's a guy, he's really good here on the match, but he's a guy that doesn't have heart. Today, hey, wait, today one of the best, best person, one of my biggest friends, die. So, uh, that's it guys. Thank you, sorry, sorry. Well, I originally had something really nice planned to say, but uh, after that, fuck him. Um, <laughs> so, uh, if he's not mentally stable enough to compete, why not just cancel the match? But uh, we actually have a rematch signed. We can do a rematch every month. It's free money for me, so I don't care. Flip is 2-0.
Gordon, the last two matches were in 2016 and 2017. How, are the, how is this one going to be different than those? I'm just better in every position than I was. I'm a completely different grappler. And uh, if you look at Felipe's Bay's most recent matches, he's pretty much just the same guy he was back then. I don't think if he actually believes what he says, you know. Like a lot of times he says just to look tough, but I see his hands, he's shaking, you know. Gordon was a little bit intimidated, was a little bit nervous, you know. And I was feeling fine, you know. I think uh, I, I had fun on the press conference. I think I'm better than him in everything besides uh, maybe he's stronger than me. Uh, well, I'm definitely stronger than him. And the only thing he's better at is losing. Uh, that's about it. Uh, if he tries to stand with me, he'll get exhausted. If he plays top position, <laughs> There's nothing new for me, you know, that doesn't bother me at all, that doesn't mess up with my head at all. He's like, yeah, I don't like this shit talk. You literally have like hundreds of photos of me memed onto a, ba onto a fat baby. What do you mean you don't like to talk shit? You talk shit the whole time. Yeah, it's what, what I said, you know, I don't like to start, but I actually like, I like him talk shit, you know. Whatever, I like him, he's my, he's my baby, you know, like I have a lot of love for him. But sometimes, we are, you know, when, you, when your baby do something wrong, you need to actually Put, put in the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, the press conference, I just remember um, being very nauseous. My, st my stomach wasn't, uh, wasn't great for that. Um, so I was just like trying to hold myself together um, and talk. These guys can say whatever they want at the press conference. The next day they're gonna have to compete against me and then you'll see who's confident. I wake up really early, like Michael called me in the morning with the notice. Michael said uh, Leandro got shot and died. What was your kind of initial reaction? How did that compute to, to your body, to your mind? Man, I don't want to keep talking about this on this interview, you know. I was shocked and I started crying and this uh, was a really bad news. So everything changed after that. It's one thing to hear that a friend has passed away. It's another thing entirely to hear that a friend has been murdered. Uh, the match went on and uh, uh, you saw the, the results. I remember like right before the match, they passed a clip of Leandro. Like Felipe was kind of like drying his, his eyes like from the tears. The jiu-jitsu world is saddened to learn of the passing of a great champion. We ask you to join us in a moment of silence to honor and pay tribute to the memory of Leandro Lowe. I was stand up right there right before I got on the match and uh, you guys put a whole thing about Leandro on the, on the screen. I almost left the match, you know. I was not sure if I should fight or not, but anyway, you know, like, it was my decision in the end, and I fought. A reminder that this match is no time limits. The only person to submit to a crime or has to cry they really don't like each other. I was like fighting with me inside my head like the whole match, you know, like I was fighting but I was like, man, I don't want to be here, you know, I want to leave. I just told myself in my head, I'm just like, yeah, this pussy quit. That's like <laughs> the reaction I had. But he wouldn't go back down to guard, even though he clearly was in guard when, we, when the ref said stop. I'm like, yeah, he doesn't want to be here. Like, the match is over. After a while, I was getting, like, tired and exhausting, and my mind was like, man, I don't want to be here, you know, think about everything. And when the match was going take longer and longer, my mental start uh, talking. Like to do this type of match, you need to be good physical, you need to be good mental, and good in spirit, you know? So definitely, I was good physically, you know, because I trained, I did, had a good camp, I was prepared, and everything was well. But after the notice, like mental and spirit, uh, was not good, you know. In the end, the match can be six hours long. People only got to remember the last minute. Now, there will be nothing nice said about him. I'm going to win the match. It's going to be 2-2. And then I'm going to get on the mic and I'm going to say, well, I was supposed to say something nice last time. And then he called me a liar and a bad person, so fuck him. It's 2-2. And now you owe me one more, bitch. I'm
você pegar. Agora. When something bad happens, you know, you need to stop and figure out what you need to improve, you know. And I think training in my hometown, I am my own teacher there, in my gym and everything. And I was missing, like, be a student again, you know, like, go to a place that someone just gonna tell you what to do, you know, like, do this, do this, do this. So that is one thing. The second thing is about, like, training partners, you know. I have really good, like, training partners there, like, purple belt, brown belt, like, even world champions and everything. But uh, I was missing, like, uh, a black belt, like, really high level heavy, you know, to go out of my comfort zone, you know. Like, there, if I sleep bad, if I eat bad, I still can go to the training and be good, you know, like comfortable. But training like uh, with Kaina and many other guys here, you know, like if I don't sleep before the night, if I eat bad, or if I drink or anything like that, and I go to the training, they're gonna beat up me, you know. Okay. You want to bet? Yeah. Hundred dollars? Huh? That you're gonna win it? No, that I kill at least five people. At least five? Five. Yes. You want bet? One hundred percent. You want bet? Yes. Five. One. One hundred dollars. Let's go. Five people. Okay. <laughs> this game right here. Kill him, kill him. Oh! No problem, you can. Welcome to my main show, guys. is a great champ uh, he's incredible but since he defeated me in 2014 uh, we became a super like big rivals uh, after that match like we kind of like became enemies you know <laughs> like off the mat like me and him like we kind of like, look at each other just like you know like we walk like different sides and it's kind of like funny to look back you know because the world the uh, roles you know and a lot of things can can happen after our last fight at GCC, we we kind of like let out, you know, all these uh, issues that we had like on the mat and off the mat as well. Uh, we just like start talking, right? Respect each other, and then later on, like he sent a message asking like to to train here to fight against Gordon. I said, of course. Man, he was like open, open heart, you know. He liked the idea right away. He said, oh. Man, I feel like happy you choose us. Let me talk to the team. And then everybody like was super happy, like, oh, that'd be sick. Like, let's let's help him, you know. Other guys from here helped me a lot. It's such a, a good vibe here. Man, they they fucking hated each other at one point. They almost came to blows a couple of times. It was Felipe's choice, and I opened the doors for him. Maybe Gordon will come here one day. Who knows? <laughs> so now you have like Felipe, like. AJ found a way to like wiggle himself in there because that's just what AJ does. He's a rat. Um, he just goes wherever the shit is. Um, and then uh, all the Athos guys who lost to me are trying to brainstorm on how to beat me. Oh, then you have Craig. Craig's in the mix too. Craig flew out there to help him as well. So they're just doing nothing but making me more angry. So it's gonna be uh, gonna be fun. He's like a soldier. He's just like what I do now. Tell me. Like he's like a a dog. Like that wants to be trained. It's crazy, like, how things happen, you know? You know, Galvão said, Felipe, to be a world champion, you need, like, eat shit. I eat shit, you know? <laughs> Doesn't matter, I just want to, to win, you know? I feel like uh, Felipe, like, assembled the Avengers um, to, like, try to take me down and I'm Thanos. but it ends like the first movie. I think Felipe had a 0.0% .0 chance of beating me, training in Brazil with nobody of note, and uh, training in Autos, I think he now has a 0.0% .0 chance of beating me. This is not a drill, this is not a test. This is pure excellence, nothing less. 
Cause we be the best of the best, believe me It's hard work, but we make it look easy We make it look easy We make it look easy Cause we be the best of the best, believe me It's hard work, but we make it look easy I'm in full camp mode right now And I'm taking this as if it was the most important match uh, of my career um, because it is you know if I lose this one people will just disregard ADCC or all of my other they'll just say forever Felipe 3 and 1. Golden's been training well ultimately I think it's going to come down to who who's able to control work rate and control pace as always uh, Gordon's stomach issue goes up and down. So long as my stomach holds up for this eight weeks I'm going to be the best Gordon both technically and physically that you've ever seen. Uh, and I should be up in about eight hours. Uh, I had to take my antacid uh, medicine, so I can't eat for like an hour or so after I take that. So I should make this and wrap it until it stays warm. So I'm driving the Corolla because this year I'm just kind of focused on just doing jujitsu. Like the house is done now, pretty much, and. I don't want to have to think about anything besides jiu-jitsu, like waking up and deciding what car I want to drive. Like I just have a routine and this Corolla is like part of that routine. I just wake up, I know that I'm going to have breakfast, get in my shitty Corolla, drive to training. This is like a routine and like miserable way for me to live life and that's what I need because if I'm not suffering, I'm not happy. He's in full swing now and, and looking good. We're getting to the point now where it's time to start making shifts to a training camp designed specifically for uh, no time limit. I think Gordon came out with excellent tactics in the third match and uh, the question will be what will Felipe be doing to nullify those, those tactics or improve upon them himself. Uh, I feel good man. Uh, feeling really bad for Pena. Uh, he's like living in someone's garage right now uh, in California and uh, I would say it's AJ's garage but it can't be his so he's living in someone's garage right now. Uh, just like abandoned all of his students did like an eight-week camp or whatever it was, 12-week camp here. It's gonna be two and two after this one. And that means Penna's gonna owe me one more match, which he will get paid for uh, once again. Collect a paycheck, and then it'll be three-two, and then he can kind of just do his irrelevant MMA thing. So I'm excited for it. I make enough money to buy this car in three days. There's no tints on it specifically because I drive in the traffic and rush hour with the sun coming up, blinding me. And then I come home in rush hour with the sun going down, blinding me. So I'm just miserable in this car with 170 horsepower. It's just boring doing this over and over again, going out and beating these guys up. Um, so I have to handicap myself in order to keep it interesting. You know you're gonna win every single time, so why not make it harder? I've literally won over 60 matches in a row over the last five years. I've won 2019 ADCC double gold, Nogi World double gold, Nogi Pans double gold, 2022 ADCC double gold. Like, I've won all these things, and I haven't been beaten. When you have someone as great as I am in a sport, um, you're almost so unrelatable that it kind of almost negatively impacts your brand. There is a lot more inspiration and positivity than people would like to think. Um, but the only people who really spend all day commenting on Instagram are the miserable losers who will give you the negative reaction. The general rule in life is that as you grow, you get a, a number of distractions in your life. And as the number of distractions increase, that, that very thing that made you great in the first place, which is a routine life, gets disturbed. Everybody loses. Um, and I'm going to lose eventually. It's just a matter of time. Um, I'll get like outpointed or something or... You know, maybe I'll make a mistake and get submitted. Um, it, it's very unlikely, but there will be there will be someone eventually who beats me. Well, don't be ready, man. 
I'm coming for you, I'm gonna beat you, I'm gonna beat your ass and give you a lesson. Felipe is so irrelevant now that I can't even really post about him. People don't even know who he is. I'm not a big fan of him, you know, like his personality. I don't think he's a good influence for the sport. Felipe always says he's confident. I am confident. Um, if you were confident, you'd give me 10 to 1 odds, but you didn't. I'm already feeling really good, really confident, you know, and I know 100% that I'm going to win this one. This one is going to be the one to tie the score. Um, so this one for me is super important. I beat him two times and I'm going to beat him again. Whether he verbally quits like he did last time or whether he just gives me a submission, he will break. He will absolutely break. I'm going to be 100% to kill him. They're both the best at what they do in the world. Ultimately, it's the result that counts and you can't take it personally and, and let's get it done. Emotionally, Felipe will be stronger. Uh, physically as well, I think physically he can be better than he was. Gordon right now, because when you're a champion, everybody like, he needs to lose, he needs to lose. He wants to see Gordon lose, you know? And Felipe is a guy that can make that happen. He's gonna be tired and he's gonna break. Three, one, he's coming for you.